Hi, I'm Joe Feeks, editor of Pig Health Today, and with me is Caitlin Mullins. She is a DVM student at North Carolina State University. Welcome to Pig Health Today. Thank you, I'm very excited to be here. We're gonna talk about a topic that makes people a little bit uneasy, and that's euthanasia, but it's a, a necessary part of not just livestock production, but also animal welfare. Absolutely, it's uh, often misconstrued as um, something that shouldn't be performed because it's ending a life too early, but really it's a compassionate way to end an animal's life when the suffering would be too prolonged or recovery is not possible at all. But I would think that it's, it's a painful decision to make uh, to have to put an animal down, but uh, I, I would imagine that there's a lot of subjectivity that goes with that as well. There is. There's definitely areas where economics play a decision, um, access to resources plays a decision, but what we focused on more specifically in my research was focusing on those areas where euthanasia decisions are pretty straightforward, specifically those criteria that are defined in the common swine industry audit. So there are those criteria that are already set out. We focused on uh, kind of training to those specific areas to prevent any subjectivity in the training materials that are gonna be uh, broadcast nationwide. So walk me through a typical scenario of when euthanasia might be necessary and the decision process that goes along with that. Sure, so um, one of the good examples we have is the case of a prolapse, or so we'll take a rectal prolapse for example. So we had a case of a nursery pig, so probably about 20 pound nursery pig, go into the barn, you're looking around, checking out your pens, you see a pig that has um, this prolapse coming out. Now, prolapses don't necessarily automatically mean you need to euthanize the pig, but once the prolapse has become necrotic, that is, it's dry and the tissue has died, there's no hope for recovery of that tissue. And so at that point, once it has crossed the line from being a fresh prolapse to a necrotic one, is when euthanasia would be required for that pig. So you have to identify the pig as being abnormal, then realize the extent of the injury and whether or not the pig can recover. And then after that, you can make a decision about euthanasia then, uh, what techniques you wanna use based on your farm's protocols, go get the equipment necessary and perform euthanasia right then. And I would imagine that in addition to technique, I mean, timeliness and being able to make a decision in a timely manner is so important to this process. Absolutely. Uh, one of the biggest challenges we have in the swine industry now is people just not having the access to resources or feeling confident enough to perform euthanasia. And so we're really trying to work towards improving that through different training programs that kind of target a different learning style than has typically been used in the past. But timeliness is what prevents a pig from suffering unnecessarily. And certainly we all want to avoid that. So what kind of training materials are available to pork producers today uh, to help them out with this difficult process? So historically we've seen a lot of on-farm training, so whether that's informal kind of company level training with new employees or it's pairing a, an experienced caretaker with an inexperienced caretaker and doing more of a job shadowing. However, today we're launching a new set of modules that are video based online that cover everything from techniques to confirming insensibility and death addressing the timeliness factor, and then developing um, euthanasia action plans for on-farm use. Well, and I think plan is a key word there because you know, this is kind of a crisis situation. You have to have a plan in black and white so all employees know what is expected of them and what are the proper procedures. Um, how does a farm go about putting together a euthanasia plan? So there are great templates online, and the National Pork Board and Pork Checkoff have provided a great foundation for farms to use to start to address those specific points that need to be looked at. Working with the farm veterinarian is always a really great option. They have the training in health and welfare to be able to differentiate pigs that may need to be euthanized right away. And so starting with them at their resources and then going off the templates provided and looking really at your unique situation and the resources you have access to is a great way to start. Not every farm is going to be able to have the same plan just by the nature of the diversity of farms we have, but everyone is going to need that plan to reduce the subjectivity in the decision-making process. Let's talk a little bit about technique. I imagine it varies if you're dealing with a baby pig versus an older animal. Can you walk us through the 
uh, the options and the ones that are considered most humane? Sure. So currently we have um, carbon dioxide is probably the up and coming method of euthanasia for young pigs. Just from the public perception point of view of people not really liking to see the manual blood force trauma and caretakers not liking to perform that method. Uh, so carbon dioxide is increasingly being used on farms for younger pigs, older pigs anywhere from like mid nursery up to finisher pigs and then breeding stock typically would be euthanized with um, a captive bolt or gunshot. So Caitlin, uh, you mentioned this new program that you're launching today. Could you get into some more detail about that and how is it different from some of the other programs that have been uh, introduced before? Sure, so what is really unique about our program is that it provides an interactive online interface between the learner and the program. So historically, and even now still, we have a lot of video training, so just a passive process where the learner is watching an informative video. Now those are great and they provide a really unique aspect where allowing the caretaker to actually watch a visual aid in addition to hearing the instructions. But with our program, we have a set of case studies in three different areas, including breeding stock, piglets, and wean to grow finisher pigs. And within each of those case studies, the learner can make decisions actively about what they would like to do presented with a case of a pig that they have identified in the barn or another caretaker has identified. And so we really focus on providing the caretaker perspective, both visually and with the script, to really mimic their daily duties and help provide that easy transition from the training to their real life duties.